Hi, Janelle again. <laughs> I have the pleasure of introducing our keynote speaker today, Scott Clark. Scott is an executive director for the technology at the town of Chapel Hill. Scott is responsible for the town-wide information technology strategy and providing oversight for technology utilized through the town. Previously, Scott worked as a senior IT manager for the town of Cary. In both towns, Scott has been involved in improvements to the IT infrastructure, smart city IoT, information security, mobile devices, policy developments, and cross-functional collaboration teams. Before moving to North Carolina, Scott worked in Maine state government for 25 years as the first director of the Judicial Office of Information Technology and then as the director of the Office of Legislative Information Technology. Scott learned his, uh, earned his Bachelor of Arts degree in Computer Science and Economics, as well as a Master's in Public Administration from the University of Maine. Scott is a Certified Government Chief Information Officer from the University of North Carolina. And I'd like to add, he's an all-around great guy. Let's, <laughs> let's give it a hand for Scott Clark. Couldn't tell whether I was going to go with the uh, the speech is two hours long or her intro was longer than her speech. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I want to keep it uh, the, this uh, to a relatively small time frame because I think you guys really want to get into uh, working with each other on things. So, uh, what I wanted to do is just uh, first of all welcome you. Uh, the excitement, the number of people here in the room. This is this is awesome. Uh, I want to thank the uh, the school district and the folks from the university and from the Cofer Chapel Hill group for helping put this together and special appreciation to uh, Janelle and Sarah who uh, from our from my office that made this happen and all I had to do was show up. <laughs> yes, so, an awesome job on their part. Um, so uh, what I wanted to do is talk just a, a little bit about um, Chapel Hill's open data. Um, if you haven't been to our open data site, there are several people here that can guide you to it. But, uh, on our open data site, the, uh, the purpose of the site is to increase government transparency. Uh, it's, it's pretty much that simple. Uh, we use an open data soft uh, platform. We bought that uh, about three years ago. Uh, it provides a good user interface for folks. It also allows you to download and it has APIs so that you can build uh, attachments to it to, into your applications and, um, and, and move forward with the data. Uh, we have several goals with it in trying to keep the data as, as uh, up to date as possible. Um, sometimes that's, that's fairly difficult. One of our uh, difficulties, and we're, we're working through, and, and Janelle and, and Sarah know this a lot because uh, it's, a, it's a difficult part of their, their responsibilities, is collecting all of the town information and getting it into the open data site is, is really tricky because a lot of uh, systems were purchased by departments independently and they have to kind of put all the, the pieces together. So it is a slower growth than what I think we originally hoped it would be, but we want to make sure that when we get information out there that it is valuable, there's good quality to it, and it is something that is sustainable over a period of time so that if people do start to use it for other purposes that it will be in fact uh, usable. Um, we also are combining this with our records management. Um, as a public entity, uh, the town of Chapel Hill, like any other public entity, needs to uh, keep their uh, keep their records, public records, make them accessible. So we're basically trying to look for workflow from the time that somebody starts to interface with the system uh, to provide a service to citizens all the way through to the, the public records that come out of that or need to be sustained for that, and, and make it a seamless workflow for. So again, uh, something that folks in my office do. Um, the other thing I wanted to touch on uh, was smart cities. Uh, Chapel Hill uh, is one of at and seven spotlight uh, cities. Uh, so we uh, we have basically been gifted uh, equipment from at and and its business partners to do several things. Um, so um, one of the things that we've, we've got going, unfortunately the data is, is only now being vetted so we cannot get it to the open data site is that uh, we have uh, a, a system with Hitachi to basically be able to look at 16 of the traffic cameras around the town and uh, it will count everything that goes uh, through the intersections that those, that those cover. 
Uh, and so we will, uh, we will be getting that data out there once we're sure that it's vetted and, and we have a fairly steady stream. So it is a pilot. It will be listed as a, as a pilot. When we're done with it, we'll figure out which, which intersections we're going to do, if we're going to do more intersections and so on and so forth. So you'll hear more about that as, uh, as it comes out. Other is parking space management. Um, and so we're working with uh, AT&T and a number of vendors, some of them local, a couple of startups even, on how they handle parking uh, management and being able to reserve spaces, be able to connect to ways to tell you where you're likely to be able to get an open parking space. So that is a project that is happening with that. Uh, we're also automating uh, crosswalks. We've had a very interesting time working with Duke Energy, but have now uh, got some success to be able to mount cameras on poles that are owned by, by Duke Energy. So uh, we got commitment from them only last week. Uh, and so uh, the people on our bike pet team and the police department have gone out and tried to figure out where would be the best place to put these uh, three Hitachi cameras. And one of the things we want to do with it is connect it to the crosswalks that we see like on MLK so that it knows when someone's in the crosswalk when they're not, so that those lights are a little more timed a little better, so you're not sitting there waiting for nobody go, to going across. <laughs> and those people who forget to hit the button and step out into the street, well, the lights will actually act. <laughs> that is another uh, thing. We'll also then be able to count the number of people and vehicles and everything that go through that, that same intersection. Uh, so uh, I think that pretty much covers the smart city uh, portion of it. Um, anything to do with smart city is is that you look at a bunch of assumptions and you want to test them, uh, analyze the data, <clears throat> and figure out whether or not it's a, it's a product that we want to continue with. So we're doing this on a piloting basis, and the idea is that in the end, it should be enhancing human decision making or actually you provide artificial intelligence to be able to manage the town a little better than it has been. So, um, so that was really quick, so I'll, I'll give you a tell you a story. So, as Janelle mentioned, I've been doing this for a few years. Um, my, my degree is, is very old, older than probably more than half the people. Um, and so, uh, I just wanted to make sure people knew that that as you're going as you're going through your career or you're going through your uh, advancement in this that you're working on, everything is a stepping stone that builds one thing upon another. And so, it is it's important. And so, the story I'm going to tell you is that. I used to work for a, in the private sector, and this is where I, I really got interested in analytics. I worked in the private sector for a, uh, a mid-sized um, uh, catalog company at the time, and now fairly online search. You may have heard of a company called LLV in Maine. Uh, and so they hired me, and my job, my first task was, it, it was an interesting meeting, but my task was to stop them from sending orders to people who weren't going to pay. <laughs> now, it sounds pretty simple, but a lot of times you just don't know, you don't know who's, who's going to pay and who's not going to pay. The company was losing at least a million and a half dollars a year, uh, and so they figured if they could recoup some of that, that would be great. So, anyway, so they, they hired me to do that, and so I said, okay, I, I think I can do it. I put together a really awesome team of, of programmers, and you sit down and you kind of design things, and you say, okay, how exactly am I going to do this? I mean, nobody tells you ahead of time I'm not going to pay. <laughs> and so you get the easy, the easy things like you get a list of stolen credit cards, you get a list of individuals who ripped the company off before, and so on. So you've got these easy data sets of, of things where you say, okay, I'm not going to ship to anybody who uses that credit card, or is this person. But then we're sitting there saying, okay, that's not really going to save us a lot of money. So one of the key things I've learned in this, and I think this, all of you being here and talking to one another is important, is that collaboration, curiosity, and asking that question, who else cares? Mm -hmm. When you're sitting there and you've got a puzzle and you can't figure it out. So we were sitting there one day and I said, you know who else cares about this? The police care about this, because these people are committing fraud. It's mail fraud, it's credit card fraud, it's this or that. So who do we call? So we call the largest uh, police office in Maine. They suggested that we call the ATF, the Treasury Department, and the FBI, and the U.S. Postal Service, because all of those people care. And it's, oh, this is great. So we get a, a large number of them in a room, and we start discussing what it is that they care about, and what information do they have that they are either willing to share, or if we shared with them, we could come up with a way of, of doing something. So, 
I said, this is kind of my, my start in looking at analytics and looking at data sets and kind of thinking outside the box. So my goal in the first year was we were going to put it in on November 1st and, and have it stop as many orders through Christmas. The objective was to stop $200,000 worth of orders from going out the door. And so this system had the kind of the precursor to artificial intelligence to it and a number of other things that, that go on for it. But we have these really good data sets and information sharing. And so by February 1st, we had stopped half a million dollars worth of stuff going out the door. Uh, so they knew that we were onto something. And so L.L. Bean then got to talk to other companies and says, who else cares? So if they're ripping us off, they're ripping off other people, other companies. So we actually got permission to, to work with other uh, retail companies, shared our information, because again, you take somebody off the street, they're not doing that. So interesting things we learned from it as you try to as you're thinking about how, how data sets work and, and things you might not have thought were related. We caused it. We, we, uh, we participated in the arrest of several people in New York who were using Elevene products to pay for drugs. We had a guy who was uh, arrested because they couldn't get in, into his house or wherever, but he ordered a canoe. So they told us that this person was going to be ordered. So we had a kind of a list of people to be kind of a watch list. And so uh, apparently, uh, you know, uh, individuals were able to dress up as uh, FedEx guys and get this guy to come out and help unload the canoe, and they arrested him. <laughs> uh, so, anyway, so they saw the value. So, so uh, the point of my story is that over that number of years of, of uh, doing this, putting those pieces together and kind of thinking out of the box and who else cares has kind of been the, the theme of my, my data and analytics. Uh, and so I'm hoping that you, uh, you know, looking at data and your, your fellows, uh, other folks here today, that you guys get that kind of that same excitement and you start making those connections and you figure out how you can use the data. In particular, we're interested in how you might be able to use that to help the town of Chapel Hill and other uh, communities uh, use data to help provide better, uh, higher quality services to our citizens. So, there's my email.